Well, welcome to Sunday Connections. I'm Arasso and I will be your coordinator for this evening. So for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Sunday Connections is a program that is unique to Red Barn Academy and it, it gives the students the opportunity to um, explore their spirituality from a variety of different spiritual origins. And tonight our speaker's name is Jed Thorpe and uh, Jed Thorpe is a YouTuber and mental health advocate. He's known for his engaging and insightful channel, Jet Set Therapy. His channel uh, currently has over 100,000 subscribers. Jet also owns and operates a mental health clinic, which is called Meaning to Live Counseling, located in Sandy, Utah. And with that, we will turn the time over to Jet. I'm glad, I'm glad there's some people still here after I spoke last time. That's refreshing. <laughs> so, um, what do you guys, what's the typical outcome from these Sunday connection meetings for you guys? And, and just so you know, if you remember, I, like, I'm good with back and forth. One word's inspiring. Because it's something inspiring? Yes. Okay. Appreciation. So appreciation. Just those kind of messages. Okay. I, I know I know with me, Jed, I kind of live my life in a tunnel with certain people and, and I like to see a different variety of people come in and speak because I get different perception and views of things I've never seen before. Okay. Alright, great. Well um let's let's rock and roll. I'll give you a brief history of where I came and we'll talk about my spiritual journey. Okay, listen, this is a this, this was assigned to me, right? Last time I came to you, let it open-ended. But like this time, hey, we gotta assign him something specific. Because who knows where it's gonna get off the <laughs> So the assignment was, it was uh, talk about my own spiritual journey. So I have to talk a lot about myself. And you guys know I don't like to do that. So this is, this is I don't know how this is gonna come off. But we'll, uh, we'll do this. I've, I've never done this before, my first time talking this much about myself. And uh, and last time, I think I would have been a little bit like, what the heck, if you fell asleep, feel free to fall asleep in this one. It's okay, I don't know if, it, if it's worthy of staying awake, I don't know, I don't know. So we'll go through it anyway. I, uh, I turned 50 years old this this uh, this year. Wow. 50 years old, I was born in San Diego and I talk so little about myself. It's very, it's very unsettling. As a therapist, you don't talk about yourself. You just listen. No, no. no. So you just don't talk about yourself. This is really an odd thing. And in order to be vulnerable, there has to be some level of trust. And I think I trust you guys. So hey, let's go for it. I was born in San Diego when I was three years old. My biological dad died, and my Mom moved to Texas or something like that. And then I ended up back in San Diego where she met my stepdad. And um, they carted me to St. George, Utah when I was quite young. You guys, do you guys know there's a difference between St. George and a little town called Washington? Okay, so yeah, I was, I was raised in Washington. It's like 3,000 people growing up. Real rural. And I remember specifically on the way from San Diego to Washington that my cat... Tina, my black California cat, had kittens in the front seat. It's nasty, huh? <laughs> hey, underneath the seat, there was kittens. Hey, don't, don't record that part. That's nasty. Huh? Okay, I had a real close view. Anyway, so there I am. I was grown up, and I had a really unsupervised experience of growing up. So, um, long story short, I... Uh, I just uh, did basically whatever I wanted, you know what I mean? And it was wasn't that much going on in Washington, Utah. So uh, I just kind of went and did whatever, a lot of shooting, a lot of hunting, a lot of fishing, a lot of just being outside. It was back in the time where you, like, you could just be outside all day long. And there was no water bottle you took, there was no like cell phone. You were just out and just did your thing. And hopefully you got back. I think they even had commercials like in the 80s at like 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, commercials came on, hey parents, do you know where your children are? 
It was, it was that unsupervised, I think just nationwide. So here we go. And also in, in Washington, Utah, it being Utah, you know, 44 years ago, it was highly LDS. So I was raised with that LDS uh, culture thing going on. Um, but again, not a lot of supervision, so I didn't really go to church in my later, later teenage years. It just kind of, this wasn't a thing. And here, but here's where my spiritual journey gets interesting. By the way, we got we got to talk about real quick before I get to the the fun part. Spiritual journey. When I think spiritual journey, I don't think spiritual. I think connection journey. Because is it being or, or having a spiritual experience? Just a feeling of connectedness. It's a feeling of being connected. You know, not being dissonant or uh, you know. You know, you know what I'm saying. So, I'm, I actually have spiritual or connection experiences when I do therapy. It's just when I'm, when it's real um, connected. I don't know how else to say it. So, rather than a spiritual journey, I'm going to say a, a, a connection journey. And also, I, and here's another thing. I don't really uh, journey makes it sound like it's there's a dead there's a there's an end to it. You know what I mean? It's the journey. I'm gonna, after this, I'm going to journey in, into my car back to my house in Sandy. It's a journey. I'm an end point. But I don't really believe that my connection journey is going to have an end point. I just think, you know, and hey, I'm not, I'm not alone. Don't look at me wild. That's the whole uh, infinity, right? That, that circle that goes all the way. I just don't think anything regarding us as whatever you want to call it, souls, I don't think we're ending, ever. Well, I have to agree. Okay. I just want to be sure about taking a drink. So, what, what do you guys, I, mean, I really do like the back and forth, what do you guys think about my ideas around uh, Spirituality, thinking is like more of that connection piece. Yeah, I, I, I agree. You know, it's it's a connection that you feel connected to. Mm -hmm. You know, whether, whether you know, connection. Yeah. yeah. Has anybody come in here? Maybe because I don't know. Like, I just hey, I got this assignment a couple weeks ago, and I'm like, I really haven't taken. What does this even mean? This whole spirituality. I know there's a difference between. Spiritual, spirituality and religion. And um, by the way, I know a lot of people in 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 all religions that aren't really that spiritual. You know what I mean? So there's got to be some kind of differentiation going on. It's like a universal connection, right? What you put into the world, you get back that connection. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. What were you gonna say? It could be beliefs, morals, faith, a group of people. Yeah. Team, whatever. Brothers. Connection. Yeah. Are you blue twenty two? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, it's good to see you. But blue twenty two. You almost fell asleep, and I was like, trying to keep him awake. That was the last time. You fell asleep with this one. So, 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 it's so good to see you. Though. So good to see you. So thank you for that comment. So when I do say things about religion, I think it's good to have. If, if needed, some guidance, a, and that might be where religion's role could be. So, but I did want—I want to say that, so I can say this. You know, I'm talking about connection. Galatians five, it's a scripture in the New Testament, that says that the fruit of the spirit, or let's just say connection, but the fruit of connection. Well, he likes it to a tree, and then the this stuff is what like the fruits are of connection, love. You guys felt love before? Like real love, not lust. You felt love? Just go ahead. Joy, <laughs> peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. I wrote this. You guys knew that? I gave, I gave it away. I said it was in Galatians. Dang. New Testament. Oh well. So, but I think that was in. Well, it's, this stuff is has its place, I think. So, but um, also I don't really have a lot of, I don't spend a lot of time in 
any kind of like scripture, but I do spend a lot of time feeling really connected. So, okay, I told you that, so I can tell you this. Backing it up, ready? Where did I leave off? I was going to get excited, wasn't it? I wasn't really doing anything. I was in 19, 19, and I was, I moved out of my house when I was 17. Oh my gosh. I had this reaction a week ago. Hold on a second. So, speaking of uh, religion, I still do go to religion, like, faithfully, right? Still go, and they asked me to teach, and I went up there to teach once. It was like a week ago, and then I tried to fly a little bit of the radar. I, I wear different colored shirts, and sometimes not even a tie, just so I can like fly under the radar. But the guy speak, and I'm like, or come do this, and I'm like, okay, and I got up there, and I was, I did this, and like, and in the middle of, like, the beginning, like, hey, anybody have any water? <laughs> you know what I, like, I'm like, okay, here, here, this is Bob, so, I'm like, okay, no one had water. Hey, you, you asked me to come back. You know what was gonna, you know what was gonna happen. You asked me. You knew what you were getting into when you asked me. So, um, I actually like say, okay, here's a little assignment, real quick. I back in three and a half minutes. I went out in my car. I'm gonna get a water. <laughs> okay. So, I'm growing up. Not a lot of religion going on. I got uh, not kicked out, but I'm like, I'm not staying here anymore. I'm 17. I'm living on my own, and I have no clue how to do really anything regarding money. So I ended up, this is pretty wild, I ended up staying at a drug house. And you can ask me, hey Jeb, what, what, what does that mean? I don't know, really. It was this yellow house on Telegraph. Everybody just called it the drug house. I don't even know how I got there, but the lady, the mom over there was really nice, and I just lived in a room there for a, for a long time, by the way. I never did drugs. Isn't that crazy? I think it's Providence. I think my dead dad was like, hey, you're not even curious about this. <laughs> Don't worry about it, Jed. You're not even curious. So I'm cruising along. I have no, no uh, religious inclinations at this point. But I did have a girlfriend. I liked, I liked girls. And I always had a girlfriend. I had this one girlfriend in Jerry Turner. I was there on my motorcycle, cruising along to her house. And I was so poor. I was so poor. I was and I was working at Smith's, um, and I, I was just making a lot of PB and J sandwiches to get out. You know what I mean? Even to the point where the cashier who knew me, she's like, "Hey, enjoy your peanut butter and jelly sandwiches." You know, because that's that's what I was eating all the time. So 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 financially un uh, just illiterate that I uh, dropped my insurance, right? and it was motorcycle insurance. Which is the cheapest kind of insurance you can get. So here I am, just like trying to figure it out. I had a car, sold it because the insurance was too much, and and I got this motorcycle on my way to my girlfriend's house. Why? Why she would be my girlfriend? Beyond me, I'm pretty funny. I look certain every day. Huh? Come on, guys, keep up. So, so uh, I'm cruising her house on my motorcycle, and, and out of out of the side came a car, and I T-boned it. And I went, Phew. and I had enough time, and I remember this, and I had enough time to think, oh, shh, not today. I didn't get to finish the, the, the thought. And I flew about 30 feet, so I'm told. I don't remember anything, <gasps> but I have no helmet either, because why would I have a helmet on? <laughs> I'm 19 years old. Who wears a helmet at 19 years old? So I had a helmet, I just didn't have it on. It wasn't on back. You know, that's, you guys seen that? Yeah. <laughs> Just don't, listen, I don't, I, I do care if you drive, drive the helmet, but if you're not going to, don't put the helmet on the, on the back of your bike. That's just, no. Yeah. So I flew, and I don't remember anything until I woke up, but here's my thing I did. <laughs> but and I hit the ground, and I do remember like hitting it and rolling a long way. Because... And, oh, and by the way, I wasn't speeding because I didn't have insurance. <laughs> <laughs> True story. I had a very thoughtful composition. Like, good. Don't speed. Don't get pulled over. You know? And this thing just came out of nowhere. It's caught. Hey, it ran a stop sign. And it got me. And then, long story short, uh, I wake, long story long, I wake, I wake up. And I, I remember this clearly. You know, and I, I look up, and all these people stopped, and they were just looking over me like this. So I'm on the ground, and again, I think, I'm so, I have no money. 
<laughs> I did I had that thought. So like, hey, can we get you an ambulance? Let's call an ambulance. Hey, who says that? that? After that, don't you just call an ambulance? If you see a kid hit something, go flying for 30 feet and then roll for another 30. Don't you just get an ambulance? Like, hey, do you want to, should we call an ambulance? And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm fine. I'm fine. And I, and I <laughs> laying there, got to imagine in the prone position. I just lifted up one leg, straight into the air, and then everything started to spin. And I, you, you done this? You done this? Yeah. So I just dropped my leg. I just dropped my leg. I said, okay, better get an ambulance. Even though I didn't have insurance, I had no, no, no idea what was going to happen. And then the uh, next part of this is I'm in the ambulance, and the EMT comes up to me. He's like, I remember this too. I got a lot of good, I got a lot of good stories, and we're just gonna hear some stories. I know this is about, hey, we're connecting, isn't this connecting? Yeah, this is connecting, we're doing it. I'm on my spiritual journey right now. So this EMT comes up and he sees, he's, he's, he's got, you know, like, on, the, on the gurney, that the club. He's like, you know, how many, how many fingers am I holding up? Go ahead. Two. And he's like, okay, how many fingers am I holding up now? Okay, he's like, how many fingers am I holding up here? Wow. And I said, I don't know, my eyes won't shut. <laughs> but guess what? My eye wasn't small shut. <laughs> I just got, my, I got hit so hard when I hit the ground that it knocked my optic nerve, it severed my optic nerve, which is inside the sheet, right? Like a sword. <laughs> So it, I didn't know. And I'm like, he was like, so like, this is the funny part. I said, you be the EMT. He's like, I'm like, I don't know, my eyes falling shut. And he said, no, it's not. <laughs> and he stopped, he's like, I'll be right back. So he goes, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. But it was this weird thing. It is, I've been blind in my left eye ever since. Isn't that wild? You can't tell, huh? <laughs> well, you probably. <laughs> it, yeah, no one can tell. No one knows this. I don't tell people this stuff. I don't talk about myself. So, hey, here we are connecting. And part of connection, by the way, is being vulnerable. I told you this part so I can tell you this part. And this is my first, like, real spiritual, like, experience. You know, I've had, spir I've had spiritual experiences. I might have lost my retainer. And then, oh, I don't want to get beat by my dad. Please get me found him. Help me find my retainer, you know what I mean? I, that's, that's the topic that I went like, and I just, that was, this a true story. And I just went, I woke, I got up, woke up, I got up, I'm like, I went to my edge of my bed, I pulled it, and there it was. I've had those kind of things. <laughs> right? It's a kind of little mind up, right? And when it happened, I'm like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's a higher being. But so this, was, this was more intense. So I go to the hospital, a few days there, and they send me home with just all these bandages. I don't know if you guys can see. Can you see this? I'm 50. This happened so long ago. This used to be a really cool scar. I went right down my eye. I can't see it anymore. And I just imagine you with a really cool scar down my eye. Very cool looking. Had a lot of street credit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's I got a motorcycle. I got a motorcycle. So I come home, all these bandages. And remember, remember the girl I was going to see? Who remembers her name? Carrie. Good, married. Blonde, cute. Um, yeah. Um, and I'm like, hey, remember, I'm still trying to, trying to like, school's, I'm trying, I think she's my girlfriend at this point, maybe. <laughs> so but I'm going to spend some time with her. And she's like, hey, do you want to come babysit? And here I am. Oh, okay. I, I don't have a car. Can you pick me up? Sure. So we go and I'm babysitting right at the beginning of, our, of this relationship. But I'm there, the, it's big. Who does that? What parent allows a babysitter for to bring over her boyfriend? Isn't that wild? Like, anyway, it's happening. So there I am on the couch. The kids are asleep. I don't even know. Like, I'm just like, oh, whatever. And, uh, but I'm cuddling with this girl. <laughs> I feel like cuddling, right? And I'm sitting there cuddling with this girl. And it's, it's good. It's real good. Cuddling. And I start getting this headache. This, this headache. Dang, this headache. Bad, you know, but I'm cuddling and I like to cuddle. And I was like, I like this girl a lot. So I power through it, you know what I mean? Just power through it. And it got so bad that I'm like, hey, Jerry, <laughs> I think I need to go home. I actually think I need to go home. 
So she's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Okay, so she takes me home, and I, I get, I walk into my single wide trailer, and my, and my mom, my mom and, me, and, I, was, I, and I say, hey mom, my head hurts. She's like, I knew it! I should have let you out of here! It was too soon! She got all in my case. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go with this. I went into the little, my little room, and I was trying to go to sleep. It's a long story. I'm, I apologize, I'm trying to make it exciting. So I'm trying to go to sleep. Oh, I just can't get comfortable. My head's hurting, and my body's starting to hurt. My whole body just feels like it's on fire, and, and an hour goes by, and I'm waking up. I'm not waking up. I'm getting up out of the bed, like, well, I'm getting a drink of water, like, every five minutes. And I just could not quench my thirst right now. Like, I was like, oh, and my body hurt, and I couldn't sleep, and I couldn't have, I had just, it was, the back then, it was just a lot of pain, a lot of pain, more pain than I can ever remember, ever having, ever. I can't even imagine, I can't even, it was the most pain, I can't. How do you describe it? It's like fire from the inside. Fire from the inside. That was kind of me. And aching up. And I remember this. this the softness was kind of like... <laughs> I don't know this story, by the way. The softness just rolled through my body. Uh, and it was like... The most calm, peaceful... Love, not love, it just felt like love, like acceptance, and like, I don't know, like imagine, I can't even, it just, and it just went, and I thought to myself, right, I think I died, <laughs> I'm not kidding, I think I died, so, I don't know, again, hey, that's the last part of, I remember, Allegedly, at like uh, 3 in the morning, my mom had one of these intuition mom things. She's like, I need to, I need to go check on my, on my boy. Right? So she goes in there. She's like, hey, I got, I got, hey, you okay? And, I, I, and per the story, I, I, I kind of woke up. <clears throat> she like, probably, I was probably right down the middle of the hall, like, woo, going to the light. Right? I was probably going to the light. I felt so good. But she woke me up and, and I did I did this on my and I didn't recognize her. The whole my whole left side of my body was paralyzed and I I kind of like I I gimp crawled to the corner of the room. Well, that's a good impression, huh? I've never done that impression before. Come me some slack. So I I gimp crawled for the story to the corner of the room and I just kind of like fell there. So She's like, ah! They rushed me to the hospital, but that was the, that was the bad one. The motorcycle wreck was nothing compared to what they call meningitis. I'm like, oh, 90% chance this kid's gonna have brain damage if he even makes it. <coughs> this explains a lot, right? <laughs> this explains a lot. So that was my first real, real uh, poignant moment of like, oh my gosh, there's something, I think there's something other than me, some higher power. That's kind of how, how it's gone. And I, I, went, I got back out of that mess. I've uh, gone to church pretty much ever since, to be honest. Like, but again, I'm trying to sleep a little bit on, right? Wearing, wearing different color shirts and stuff. No ties. Let's throw them off a little bit. But the fruit of, of connection is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. I like that. Um, again, hey, this is connection. Connection is when it's 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 a two-way street. We're learning from each other. I'm open to learning. I want to hear what you guys have to say. What about temperance? I just thought about this today. I don't think I've ever, I've never thought about this, this word, until this, until I, I was writing it down. I'm like, temperance. What do you guys, what is this? Patience. Maybe. self Oh, there's too many people. What was that? Self-discipline. Self-discipline? Hey, hey, I, I like that. What do you guys think about this? Because as I was writing down, I'm like, temperance. Temper. Isn't that like a word? Like sword making, where you're hitting something? Temperance. Is, is that what, is that? Do you guys hear that before? Temperance. So what, what if part of, <laughs> again, I don't know if this is how, 
I don't know. But hey, I, I wrote this. If I can make anything up, I want, right? Hey. So I don't know if this is valid, but it feels right. It feels it feels good to me. What if temperance means you've been hit? You know what I mean? <laughs> like a sword. <laughs> Follow me. You know what I mean? So you guys ever thought? That? What if temperance? What if a fruit of connection, part of part of connecting with people, part of this whole journey that uh, again never ends, part of it means that we get sharpened. I said that word. Molded. What do you guys think about that? Again, I don't know if it's, I don't know if that's legit. I don't know. <laughs> Feels right. <laughs> and I'll get someone to come up here. Hey, let's talk about something. I'm not really sure what it means. <laughs> I don't know. But this is what this is what the connection is, though. You know, I'm open. I'm open to. I don't know what it means, but guess what? It sure does feel right to me. It sure does feel right. What do you guys think? Should I just be like, is that my spiritual journey so far? What type of connection? You know, is there like a symbiotic connection or a sick connection? Oh, that's a good question. I think it has to be like a symbiotic. That's where both people are. Like, give and take from each other. Yeah, give. Yeah. Sometimes you kind of call it to that. Because if one was giving something up and the other was each other. Yeah. I don't know. Sounds good. Sounds good. Well, I like the idea of like, hey, it's not just connection. Now look, so hey, I got this leech on me. I got this leech, we're connected. I'm sucking all my blood. I don't think that's the kind of connection that is. is you know, checks the box off connection. That's, that's a good thought. Thank you. I didn't even think of that. We have that together. You know what I mean? This is connecting. Oh, it's very, what's your name? Jonathan. I'm just connected, man. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, what do you guys think about that? And where, and where, hey, how about this? Where, and again, you don't have to answer, but where might you have not been in a, as, as a, where were you in the leech connection? What? <laughs> 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 huh? Oh, <laughs> thought about stuff, huh? <laughs> yeah, leeches. The leeches out there. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've got some leeches on me. Did you raise your hand? Oh no. Oh, you know I'll catch, you know I'll catch it. I got a good eye. It's a good eye. And if you're over here, you're safe. By the way. No, I can't see anything. My kids, they still can't. They still get mixed up. My kids, they're 16 and, and 13. The, to to like this year, like the dad is it. Which eye is it again? You know, because they're trying to figure out which one they can like. Sneak around. Keep on switching it on. <laughs> what do you guys? What do you guys do? What do you guys do to connect on this connection journey? Uh, we play ping pong. What's that? We play ping pong. Ping pong? You guys are ping pongers? How good are you? Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> how much? How much do you think humor has to do with connection? Uh, huh? How much you guys laughing here? A lot. A lot. Isn't that weird? Like you would think, you know, I go, why, why would I be laughing so much? But guess what? You probably are. How much of this are you guys feeling here? Yeah, joy, peace, long suffering. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Everybody, I think we're all on this connection journey. They call it a spiritual journey. I think it's a connection journey. And right now, in this moment, in this moment, here's what's happening. How cool it down here. It was already there. How cool if like, I had so much forethought, but remember, it didn't happen. But I did get hit in the head. Really hard. Right now, here's what's happening. Here's my little, here I am. There's my, there's my, uh, there's my connection journey. I'm somewhere in here. And you guys. Huh? In this moment, we're, we're all, we're, we're connecting right here. In this moment. You guys laughing. Huh? Good stuff. I'm telling you about myself and being vulnerable. <sighs> um, hey, here's my joke. 
You guys remember in like talking with someone and they say, I don't know why I'm crying right now. You say, it's just my face. That's <laughs> really It's a good joke, I promise. You like it. <laughs> so, but here we are in this connection piece. I, I feel like that's where I'm at in my spiritual journey. Is that usually how these things go? Is this kind of how it goes? With these things? I'm just glad you guys invited me back. I wasn't sure if you would have last time. That's not a joke. Stop laughing. That's not a joke. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so do you guys, uh, how, what time is it now? It's 6.33. So 6.33, yeah. Let's open it up for the next few minutes. And again, this is going to go as long as you, as you go. I've got a hard, hard stop at 7. And when you, get, when you said, Russell, when you said hard stop, I thought of, uh, you guys ever play a Fortnite? Yeah. yeah. Do you know that wall that kind of moves? Yeah. <laughs> it's a wall of... I don't know, oblivion. <laughs> kind of moves. I thought to myself, okay, I'm hit by the wall of oblivion. It's 7 o'clock. It's almost 7! So, <laughs> well, let's take a few minutes and just open this up. What? I'll, I'll ask you a question. So, uh, what made you decide to start a YouTube channel, and what does it take to have like a, a successful YouTube channel? Is it just a lot of content, commitment, or things like so, that? So, that's a good question. I, I started the YouTube channel because I was working in a rehab. Well, there. My meningitis is kicking in. Hold on. <laughs> I was working in a rehab, and, I, and I, it kept on like people would come through, but they would. They typically couldn't afford therapy afterwards, so I'm like, I'm gonna start a, a channel just to talk about basics. What we're talking about in here: where's your value come from, external stuff, secondary gain. So I just like. I'm going to make this channel so people can, when they leave, can at least have some refresher. And it was, yeah. And um, to, if you wanted to keep going, like if you wanted, it's really anything. Hey, if you, if I wanted to be a YouTuber to, to be really good at, or to have a lot of subscribers, I would never be happy until I had a lot of subscribers. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be like, a, like this in the journey, right? i got to get to this place before I can be happy. Gotta get to it. I'm gonna work really hard. I'm gonna do all these things. Uh, I just gotta do it, right? It's over there. And I'm always like, not, not okay until I get there. So uh, right away, I was like, hey, if this works, cool. If it doesn't, I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I've been doing like six years, like a ridiculous amount, and it didn't even start going until like November. I know. Isn't that crazy? Woo. So I and here's what I realized. The less I show my face, the more subscribers I get. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. Uh, that's what I'm not saying I'm ugly or anything, but there are prettier people out there to look at. If you're going to spend your time on YouTube, but yeah. So I, I had fun with it. It's like I saw this commercial once where mm -hmm. was, they were talking about gold mining. It was, I guess it was like a little news story. And the person at the end, you know, they went through the whole, this is what you do. And the person at the end said, but finding the gold might not be the real treasure that you actually find. Because people might just start to really enjoy being out in nature and, you know, just, they're enjoying this, you know? They're enjoying walking around, you know? Hey, do stuff. I don't have to find gold to be okay. I'm just doing this kind of thing. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yep. <laughs> like, more than answer. <laughs> Yeah, I've never asked any question. I've got to make a, how to make a short question. Okay. This, uh... So I also have bacterial meningitis, brain infection. Yeah. Hey, brother. You know, yeah. Oh, brother, yeah, it almost took me out. Yeah, meningitis. We do, we do not recommend it, do we, Dave? No. We do not recommend it. Or... Okay. Yeah. The great excuse. You know what I mean? Like, hey, if you ever do something, like, if you get someone's birthday, hey, I had to have meningitis. <laughs> 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 I did have meningitis. They gave me 90% brain damage. That's basically what happened. But I don't know, man. But uh, I, I think that everything, uh, when people do this whole, they come to therapy, part of the gig is I'm trying to give them different angles of, of ways to look at stuff. Different, 
ways to perceive things. And I don't think, I don't think it was just meningitis that got you on this path. I think even a lot of things have gotten people to where they're at. All of them being okay. All of them being okay. And they're like, hey, what do you mean? This person dying in my arms is okay. I'm not saying it's not tragic, but I am saying that it is an experience that that you partook, you know, that helped that helped shape you. This. Now, you guys remember last time, I think we talked a lot about sword sharpening and whatnot. Hey, don't, 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 don't run with that. You don't talk about that. <laughs> Let's get some, any questions you actually want to know, like they can, we can, we can connect on? Yeah. What happened to the kittens that were born in the car? Oh, um, yeah, good question. That's, a great, that's the best question I've had all year. Uh, right here. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, they were born, and I kept one of them, and I named her Foxy. And she lived to be 21 years old. Yeah, in Washington. Huh? California cats. <laughs> Black cats. <laughs> I don't know. How they survived Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> they were in the raptor, right? In the raptor. Cool cats. I'm not really a cat person. Did you bury the same girl? No. No. Who? <laughs> I tried to dump her. She would not. So I, I, I did like end up going on an LDS mission, and the whole time she's like, "I'm gonna wait for you." I'm like, "Okay." And she did. I'm like trying to like. She got kind of chubby though. <laughs> <laughs> I was hey, I was shallow back then. Oh. <laughs> Can't say that 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 bad PR right there. What's the word that doesn't say it? Yes, the PC. Oh, yeah. The correct, yeah. Who asked that question? Where are we going? <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to do this. And I had to come home. Two whole years she waited. I'm like, oh. And I came home. I'm like, hey. Hey. <laughs> when she, yeah. Women. <laughs> so, so, where did you serve your mission? And did that help you on your spiritual journey? Um, throughout your your journey, so far. I think anything is helping. I think I would be great if I didn't do it, and I think that I did do it, and that was great too. Nothing happens to me, you know what I mean? It's a everything that happens is for you on some level because it's created us. Where we're at right now, you know what I mean? It's created us. If here, if we, if I think if I have regret, and I think that something bad happened in the past, that means. Does it help shape me? What does that mean about me? Um, that's, a, that's a question. What do you guys think? What, do you, what would that mean about me if I thought that something bad happened in my past, which coincidentally shaped who this 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 is? You would be a victim. Yeah, I would. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be okay. I wouldn't be okay. Different way of thinking, huh? I see it. That's why I see you like. Oh. Yeah. What's your name? Evan, right here. Uh huh? You guys? You come? Uh huh? Do this. Yeah. Connecting. Oh, one more question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was your experience with long suffering, and how does it apply to human connection in your eyes? I think long suffering is patience. Because people don't do what we need. What we are comfortable with them doing all the time, so I think that's what I'm suffering. That's what I think. Well, wait, is patience already up there? I could be way off. Well, I wrote this. <laughs> I didn't say it, but I wrote that. I wrote that. You can even look it up. It's in Galatians. Yeah. 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 Maybe it means we're supposed to feel. How does it find this connection? I think maybe in some ways it can apply like human connection and, and love and joy and peace in, in an aspect of how can you experience love, joy, and peace if you haven't experienced Yeah. Well, isn't that what we're connecting on now? Right. <laughs> Talking about all the suffering things that happen, one eye. Huh? Where is this one? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Does that help? Is that 
Just, hey, we're connecting right now. This is all connection. I think connection, and I, I see you, I, we're, we're together, it's gonna happen. I think part of connection is when we're like being enlightened at the same time. You know what I mean? Like we're having thoughts we've never had before. Having like, yeah, part of the connection. Yeah. Would you say that those things come from, from choices that you make? That we make? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, what do you guys what do you guys think? Sometimes people think that's the spirit. I don't know, maybe it is. Hey guys, I think that it doesn't matter what your history or experiences are. I think that this is a creation of sorts. You guys came here to Red Barn and you're learning all this stuff and feeling peace and joy and, and connection. You're learning that. There's there's this there's a book called uh, Change or Die. They, they say on some level that you need an environment that will help foster feelings of the spirit. You know what I mean? I think your environment is a big deal. And part, partly what was frustrating me in, in rehab is there was a good environment in rehab. But then, guess what? One month, three months, whatever, they would leave and then they would go back to the pool. The not clean pool, by the way. So, yeah. Environment. Did you ask that question? Question asker? Who asked that question? <laughs> Who was that? Ah, uh, I see you. Are you here? <laughs> I'm wondering, uh, so how did you get into being a therapist and how long have you been a therapist? Oh, yeah, this is my second career. I, gr I graduated, my, my wife, by the way, I was 29 when I got married. Whew, she took a big chance on me. <laughs> a real big chance. I was, I, I, was, I, was, I was real funny or something. Like, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, did did uh, went and worked in recruiting. Recruiting, I was good at that. You know, good with connecting with people. You know, helping people get jobs and stuff. But then 2008 came. Here's I don't even answer this question. Okay. Change five minutes, Jed. Just answer it. <laughs> so uh, who asked who asked that question? Is it you? Yeah, I'll get it. Connecting. <laughs> Not very well, Jay. I don't even know who I am. <laughs> so, you know. So, where was I? 2008 hit. I lost everything. You know, lost everything. Wiped us out financially. And I was playing a lot of World of Warcraft. <laughs> a lot of work. I'm working like some weird job, you know, because there's no jobs out there. 2008. And my wife's like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jay. You gotta do something. <laughs> That's what I've ever seen. You gotta, do, you gotta do something. Can't you sit here and play video games? So I'm like, well, I have my degree in psychology, and I'm gonna just go back to school. So I just went to school and worked at the graveyard full time, and, and it's been 12 years now since I graduated. I couldn't make money at World of Warcraft. That's why I'm doing it. And I really didn't, hey, to be honest, I didn't really have a real inclination to be a therapist. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say this, Jay. You're supposed to say, you love this, and this is your life, and everything. <laughs> no, not really. No, I was just like, hey, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. i got to do something. But man, the more I've done it, woo! It's so fun. I mean, but I really didn't have to make it. You make a lot of money? No, I'm paying a lot of money for student loans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell you that part. <laughs> But I, um, I make more than I did when I was working at for somebody. Ooh. Here's a breakdown, the rough breakdown. Hey, you might want to edit this part out too, because it really be frustrating with therapists. <laughs> I was fighting tooth and nail to make $25 an hour. That was like, what was that, like six years ago? Six years ago, what about that long ago? Five, six years ago. But uh, doing your own thing, you make like 100 bucks an hour. Probably a little more. 
So people are like, oh, if there are paid therapists out there, just so you know, that's your worth. That's your worth. Right? Get your money. Get your money, therapists. We're too, too, we're too caring. You know what I mean? By the way, people in the caregiving field, you know, nurses, teachers, therapists, they're suckers. Sucker, we're suckers. We're too agreeable. I've been working really hard on this, by the way, personally. We're too agreeable. Hey, you come work for us, do nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to help you. <laughs> Getting used. Not okay. That's why I said that bit about it. That's get what you're worth. <laughs> your employee, your, your person who hired you sure is. You know what I mean? <laughs> Can you imagine? Anyway, I have a real. You hit, you hit my source spot, whoever asked me. It's not okay! <laughs> my, uh, my, uh, my connection journey involves this, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. But I, they, you know what's weird? Like, I, er, earlier on, I really don't really, I don't put a lot of time into a religious you know, praying and horrible. I, I just don't have that value to me. But guess what? I feel so in tune, if that's what you want to say. I feel like I feel like I feel the spirit, if that's what you want to call it, a lot. I feel so happy, you know what I mean? Like I feel very connected with, with people I've come in contact with. And in my life. So I don't I don't really think you need any kind of anything in order to feel to be on a spiritual journey or a connection journey. I don't know if that's a question someone asked, if I just volunteer that information. <laughs> we need a way. It's good stuff. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Take some good deep breaths. We're having, this is the moment we're having. Me too, we're coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah. It's good. You guys, you guys feel it? Even, you don't have to be, you don't have to hear stuff all the time. You don't have to be an you know, entertainer or anything like that. You can just sit here. Take some good breath. Just be happy. We're just happy. We're good. In this very moment, all of us. You see how I look to see if I can hit the podium? That would be wild, huh? I'm like, hey, we're good. Fly <laughs> <laughs> die. This is good. This is good. We're around with it. That's the board. There's everything on there. I'm looking for it, except for the long suffering. It's the only one I had. All the rest I'm looking for. That's a deep board. I like that. Oh. I wrote that. <laughs> Came from this. Right here. Yeah. It's in a lot of books. <laughs> very tough, very tough. I'm published, I guess, at this point. <laughs> yeah. Hey, keep that, man. Good work. What's your name? William L. Lloyd? William L. Oh, way off. <laughs> <laughs> way off. <laughs> yeah. It's a time thing. Mm. All right. Um, is the Fortnite thing going to come through? <laughs> is the Fortnite thing? Is it coming? Yeah, it's coming. It's right now. Okay, it's right now? Okay. <laughs> Guys, I really appreciate this. This was nice. I mean, selfishly, I, I got a lot out of it. <laughs> hey, I, it's okay. It's okay to say that. Um, if you guys could keep the, the comment that I made about overweight women and that girl, that would be great. Because <laughs> nobody knows that. Who said that? Yeah. But I appreciate you guys coming over here and, and connecting with me. I should have like, done the drop the mic thing. Just for about, I know what I mean? Just that. Oh, Right, so I'm going to touch on this just a little bit. So I, I love the energy you bring to the room, okay? It brings joy to my day, and I can feel the goodness that you bring with you when you come, and it you know, kind of rejuvenates my faith. So we appreciate it very much, and you do bring, uh, you know, the fruit of the Spirit with you, and we're grateful to have you here, and thank you. So thank you very much.